Hey everybody, welcome to Coffee with Joe for December 19th, 2009. It's a Saturday. The rest of the East Coast is being hit by a snowstorm while we're making this video, but it's quiet here in Vermont where we normally get a lot of snow. Right. Joe's up here visiting family. Welcome to Vermont, Joe. Thank you, Pete. I'm always glad to be back. Joe, Vermont is the land of Bernie Sanders, uh, independent senator who uh, recently made headlines for putting a hold on Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke's renomination for another four-year term. Uh, Bernie, I see Bernie's actions, Pete, is, is, is more about holding Bernanke accountable for the way that he was largely responsible um, for the financial crisis that we find ourselves in. So we don't have the accountability for what happened during the financial crisis. We we do not have it. We do not have any congressional investigation. We do we do not into have the cause any, of the, into financial the cause of the crisis. crisis. And yet we're going to we, we we're talking about reappointing the guy who was at the helm at the time, you know, that it happened. Um, your your point is that Bernanke not only navigated the ship through the storm, he actually helped create the storm. Is that right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and 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 by giving his assent yeah. to all this financial ephemera that's been created in the last ten or twenty years. I say more than assent. I, I mean, not not his, not just his assent to it, his championing of it, Pete. Okay, his championing of it. He, very little difference between him and, he and Greenspan. So if Greenspan can come out and admit that there was a fundamental flaw in the way that he saw free market economies working, what does Bernanke, you know, what does Bernanke have to say about what that? What are his thoughts you about know, that? Uh, you know, he says, we did some, th he, you know, he comes out and says, well, we did some things wrong that we should have had a higher emphasis on this. No, it's fundamental to, to the structure of the financial system and therefore the banking system, the monetary system, all of that stuff, the economic system. Because now it's the economic system that's manifesting itself in job losses, wage losses, benefit losses, all that stuff. Those are economic realities that happen as a result of uh, the failure of us to uh, probably regulate the financial industry. Joe, there are a lot of comparisons between what we're going through now, this financial crisis and the Great Depression of the 1930s, and in we fact... We didn't get the Chicago plan for full monetary reform passed in the 1930s, but we did have the Glass-Steagall Act. Glass-Steagall was repealed in 1999. Yeah, 1999. 1999 was, uh, you know, under Clinton was, I call, you know, kind of the final nail in the coffin of, uh, of Glass-Steagall and financial regulation. Um, it was, you know, basically to total deregulation, um, and it happened incre incrementally throughout history, even including, even at least including Carter and Reagan and, uh, and Bush, uh, each one of those, you know, taking a piece out of it, Pete. Um, you know, yeah, if we would have had the Chicago plan for, you know, monetary reforms, not just the banking industry, but the money system, Pete, then we wouldn't, we couldn't possibly have had any of these kind of types of problems. Right. Separation of the risk from the that the investment bankers might take with their power to leverage and create monetary uh, structure structured vehicles uh, instruments uh, you know to come crashing down and that's basically what what has happened. Our deposits are more or less our our you know deposits are more or less protected by the FDIC. Um, another of that 30s era reforms. Um, that, that wouldn't be necessary. That wouldn't if we be had necessary. The Chicago exactly. Plan. Exactly. If we had the Chicago plan, so we have this time when you know Bernie's you know been out there, and we. I haven't heard him say anything about Glass Steagall. Uh, well, it hasn't really you know it hadn't really surfaced until really I would say you know within well, the last. McCain couple of weeks. came out in favor of it just yesterday. Yeah, yeah. John McCain, uh, you know, interestingly because of his, uh, you mentioned the uh, or. or Mr. Dorgan mentioned the uh, savings and loan uh, fiasco, Pete. This is an issue that definitely, you know, transcends ordinary politics anyway, because it has to do with what is a country, what is a sovereign country, what, how does our money system work, how does, how do we set up uh, a fair, level playing field for 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 getting the benefits out of the economy to the people, as opposed to the bankers and especially the investment bankers you know how big how big they can be and and bring the rest of us down right and we would like to see Sanders Leahy and uh, Congressman Peter Welsh from Vermont all come out in favor of Glass-Steagall of course if anybody understands what's going on in the in the world right now in terms of uh, 
the workout of the of the financial industry, um, they would have to be able to say, if the people matter, we should first restore Glass-Steagall. And again, that's really, uh, as you said, only a part of the road, you know, to get back to true economic democracy, which we could have with debt-free money.